Hi, hello friends. Welcome back to TRB Division session. So in this session, we will be continuing from where we left. We are completely revising all the subjects, especially for TRB under BAR 2023. Already we were completed analog electronics, signals and system, whole topics without leaving any single topics. I have given all the ideas. Now currently we are discussing about measurements. Let's continue from there where we left. So the last class, if you observe, we have been discussed about all type of uh, basic instruments and what are the types of errors are there, how to identify all the errors and its corresponding formula. Everything we were discussed in the last class. Now in this session, we are going to discuss about the next topic in electrical measurements that is called basic measurements. So we'll be discussing about the type of instruments which is used for us to measure the AC power, DC power, everything. So keep that in. Next, we are going to discuss about basic instruments. So in basic instruments, what are the important formulas that you must remember? So the first instrument under the basic instrument that we are going to look at now is called PMMC. The instrument number one is we are going to discuss now is PMMC. Now tell me what is the definition for PMMC sir? PMMC is nothing but permanent magnet moving coil. We know the definition for PMMC that is permanent magnet moving coil. Permanent magnet moving coil that is called PMMC. Now what are the basic important things that are very important when we are discussing about permanent magnet moving coil. Let us discuss about the important formulas that you must remember when we are discussing about permanent magnet moving coil. The first formula when we are discussing about PMMC is you must know how to calculate the value of torque that will be developed inside the permanent magnet. As you people are observing whenever we are discussing about any types of uh, devices you might be learned that we are having uh, three types of uh, torques. What are the torques that we are discussing sir? Just recollect once. We will be having the first torque is called a damping torque. Correct now? Under the second torque there is one more damping. That is called what the second uh, torque is called controlling torque. Now what is the difference between damping torque and the controlling torque? You must learn these things because they are very important. Anyway, so as we are discussing about PMMC instrument, you must know the important uh, formulas and uh, how these uh, talks are playing with the instrument. So first I will complete that. You might be not uh, remembering all these uh, types of talks. See, first one, whenever we are discussing about any type of instruments, it is very important to know these uh, three uh, talks. The first one is called, I will be starting from basic. First one is deflection talk. Just recollect once, what is the meaning of deflection talk? Just recollect once. And the second most important task, as we are observing, as I told, that is controlling task. There will be one more task that is called damping task. So you will have to remember all these task. So we have discussed the deflection, controlling. The last one is damping task. Damping task is the final one that is playing a vital role. Anyway, let's go one by one. Now, when we are discussing about the deflection torque, uh, damping torque and the controlling torque, what is the meaning of a deflection torque, sir? Deflection torque, it's a kind of uh, electromagnetic torque, which is used to do, move the pointer from zero to any particular position that we are looking for. For an example, if I am having a meter, in a meter, instrument is initially showing zero reading. Now, with the help of a deflection torque, what we can do is, you can move this meter pointer from zero to any particular position that you are looking for, for the particular measurement. That is basic meaning of deflection torque. What is the controller torque? Controller torque means, for example, with the help of deflection torque, this pointer is started moving, moving, moving up to a particular position. Now, we need some opposition torque, which is helping us to stop the pointer at any particular location. For an example, let us assume, this is an ammeter here, I will have to move this pointer and I have to exactly stop it at a 2 ampere reading. Deflection torque is the one which is pushing this pointer to go from 0 to 2. Controlling torque is creating the opposition torque and it is exactly stop this pointer at this 2 ampere reading. 
So controlling torque, it is used to stop the pointer at the desired final value, exactly where we want to stop it. Now from here, what you can observe here is deflection torque. Let me take it as a DD and the controlling torque DC. The deflection torque and the controlling torque are always opposite to each other. They are always opposing each other, opposite to each other. You will have to remember. So deflection torque is using to move the pointer. Controlling torque is creating the opposition torque to stop the pointer where exactly we are demanding our required value. Really. Now the last one is called a damping torque. Damping torque is the it is used to reduce the oscillations of the pointer when it is positioned in its corresponding location. See, we always know that for an example, I have a pointer here. This pointer is moving from here to here. After reaching the particular position, see how we are uh, stopping at this point with the help of controlling torque. So now deflection torque work is over. Controlling torque work is over. After controlling torque is stopping the pointer at a particular location, pointer will start at vibrating. There will be some vibrations. So that is what we are considering or calling it as oscillation in the reading. At the final position, your pointer will start oscillating. Now what we have to do is, with the help of the damping torque, we are trying to reduce the oscillations at a particular required position. When the pointer is fixed at its final value, it will be creating the oscillation. That oscillations will be stopped or reduced quickly with the help of the damping torque. So finally, how many torques we are having, sir? Totally we are having three types of torques. One is deflection torque, TD we can consider. And the second one is controlling torque, TC. Damping torque, I am using capital D. Just to see the difference. For deflection torque, I am using small d. For damping torque, I am using capital D. Just to show the difference between these two torques. Okay. Now as we are, so we have seen the difference between these two, these three. And uh, I will do one thing before starting the PMMC. We will have to know a few more things. Uh, like when we are uh, discussing about uh, the deflection uh, torque. The deflection torque, how we are producing the deflection torque. What are the types of the effect that we are using to, to produce the deflection torque? Deflection torque is the one which we are using in order to move the pointer from one point to another point. Now, how we are creating this deflection torque? So, keep the heading. First one, it is very important. Some one more questions will be framed. When we are discussing about the deflection torque, we can create the deflection torque with the help of so many effects. The one more question is, deflection torque can be produced with the help of the first one. It can be produced with the help of Hall effect. Why I am writing this one at the starting itself is you will be forgetting after that. So you should remember Hall effect is the first one process. And we can also produce the deflection torque with the help of chemical effect. And we can also produce the deflection torque with the help of thermal effect. We can also produce the deflection torque with the help of the most important term that is induction effect, electromagnetic induction effect. We can also produce the deflection torque with the help of magnetic effect. We can also produce the deflection torque with the help of electrostatic effect so all you have to remember is see there are so many ways to produce the deflection torque in one more question they will give out of this among us this uh, <coughs> among us the six method they will give some any one of these and you will be requested to identify the method which is used to produce the deflection torque so it is very important to know how we are doing all these things okay the second one is controlling torque so just remember these things that is enough. The next torque is called controlling torque. As you might have observed, controlling torque, I am using TC, representation of the controlling torque. We will be using TC. When we are discussing about controlling torque, what are the types of the control that we are using? So standardly, there are two controls, they are very important. First one is spring control and the second one is gravity control so we will be using we will be focusing on two types of controlling methods first one is called spring control method and the second one is called gravity control method 
second one is thought gravity control the third it is very important to know the difference sir because as we are observing you might not study about the all effect chemical effect thermal effect at all but i know most of you might study about the other things with the help of induction magnetic electrostatic we can create the deflection torque we know but most of you might not keep your attention with the other three methods all effect chemical effect thermal effect or also some other uh, process with the help of this also we can develop the deflection torque similarly if you are observing controlling torque in controlling torque what blunder mistake will happen is people will be thinking only spring control will be there to control to develop the controlling torque no controlling torque can be developed with another method also that is called gravitational control now inside this what type of uh, components that we are using if you are observing spring control inside this the spring method is called we will be using hair spring we will be using hair spring so this is the one which is used to provide the spring control first thing now when we are talking about gravitational control we know we are using weight to balance the motion of the pointer here we will be going with the weight so this is used to control the motion of the pointer we know so this is gravitational control so you must know the difference between these two when we are playing with the gravitational control and spring control you must know these things and the next the next one is when we are observing spring coils the springs are usually connected in series with the moving coils i will tell you the other one more question whether the spring is connected in series with the moving coil or it is connected in parallel with the moving coil the thing is it is always connected in series with the moving coil you might have observed the operation but from the operation you must note some important point which will be directly asked in the exam it will be connected in series with the moving coil it will be connected in series with the moving coil that is another important point that you must remember and next one is through the spring only current will be going here you might have observed that in spring control current will be flowing through the spring only current will be flowing through the spring only before entering into so what it will do is usually current always uh, enter into spring it is carrying the uh, current into the coil and then it is coming out of the coil so in the terminal point you can observe the spring what it will be doing is current will be going through the spring coil and it is entered into the device again it is coming out with the help of through the spring only it is coming out so what you must remember is the spring control method in spring control we are not only uh, using it for the purpose of controlling or uh, producing the controlling torque current is always flowing through the spring coil only that is the most important point and next thing is when we are observing this uh, controlling torque if you are using it uh, in uh, sorry if you are using this what type of material that we are using to design this controlling torque material spring we are designing this spring with the help of phosphorus bronze that is the next one this spring will be made up of phosphorus bronze so that is another most important point that you must remember phosphorus bronze is the one that we are using to design the spring material so you have to remember all of all of all of these things what are the i am giving they are very very important okay next when we are talking about uh, the gravitational control now the first most important question repeatedly asked is whether the scale is linear scale or non linear non linear scale that is the one question this scale is always non linear this scale is always non linear about when we are discussing about gravitational control that we must remember okay next uh, Uh, let us discuss about types of uh, another term that is damping term that is all about see i have given all important things as i am doing revision i may not be able to cover all the points so i am just covering only the important required point the next uh, type of term is damping term so we have discussed about two type of term the last one is damping term we completed deflection term then we have discussed about controlling term now we will how to complete the damping term also what are the types of the damping torque that we are using sir usually if you observe the most important uh, method is eddy current damping you can observe that this is the one of the most important method the first one is eddy current damping the first one is eddy current damping what about the second method sir apart from eddy current damping we will also be using air friction damping and fluid friction damping just recollect everything the next one is 
air friction damping air friction damping and fluid friction damping so now as we are observing we are using uh, three methods here now the important question is in which device we are using this eddy current uh, damping sir the first one the important question repeatedly asked is in permanent magnet moving coil your eddy current damping will be used and the second one if you are observing air friction damping air friction damping is specially used in moving iron instrument first it is specially used in moving iron instrument other than that it will also be used in watt meter it will also be used in electro dynamo meter it will also be used in electro dynamo meter So air friction damping is one of the most important thing. Another one. See in PMMC, the one and only damping that will be preferred one is eddy current damping. When we are looking for air friction for moving iron, this is the highly preferred one. So then when we are using this fluid friction damping, especially it will be used in electrostatic meters. It will be used in electrostatic voltmeter especially. It will be used in electrostatic voltmeter. Just remember, all these points are very important. Next, uh, if you are observing eddy current damping, what type of van that we are using? Inside this, if you observe, we will be using aluminium van and permanent magnet. So here we will be using aluminium van and permanent magnet. Name itself it is given PMMC. It is used in PMMC. So we will be using permanent magnet. And I told this is the most effective damping method for measurement of uh, in case of PMMC. So here one more thing is where we can use this eddy current damping. What is the most important key point that you must remember while discussing about eddy current damping? The thing is as we are suggesting that it will be playing with the aluminium band plus permanent magnet as I told. It means in any device. If you are having strong magnetic field, then only you will be able to use this method. If you are having a strong magnetic field, is the demand of this eddy current damping method. So wherever you have strong method, strong magnetic field, if you are able to produce this strong magnetic field, there you can use this eddy current damping method. Otherwise, it is not possible. So the most important key point, it will be playing in the instrument which is having a strong magnetic field since permanent magnet moving coil is itself is having a very strong magnetic field that's why eddy current damping method is highly recommended for pmmc now when we are discussing about air friction damping air friction damping will be suitable for same way i will tell you as we are observing pmmc will be suitable for strong magnetic field similarly air friction damping will be suitable for just opposite to this that is weak magnetic field. If an instrument is having weak magnetic field, then obviously air friction damping is the recommendable one. Moving iron, watt meter, electrodynamometer, whatever the things that we are seeing, in all of these devices, instruments, the magnetic field is usually very weak. That's why the suggestible damping method for all these instruments is air friction damping. Understand, sir? So you must remember this. That is the other most important point when we are discussing about air friction damping. Next, when we are discussing about fluid friction damping, actually we will be using a high viscous fluid. It's a kind of mineral oil in fluid friction method we will be using. This method will be suitable for the instrument which is having very low value of the deflection torque. It will be recommendable where we will be having if an instrument is having very low value of the deflection torque, then this method is highly recommended. Understand, sir? Hope you are uh, observe, understanding what I am trying to say. So, you will have to keep the important key points. Anti current will be suitable for strong magnetic field, air friction will be suitable for weak magnetic field, fluid friction will be suitable for low deflection torque. It means electrostatic meters, electrostatic voltmeter, especially having. Low deflection torque, that is what I am trying to mean here. One more question. The deflection torque of electrostatic metal is very low, very less. 
very very low so it is coming low deflection torque that's why fluid friction method is the recommendable method for electrostatic meters hope you can see the difference sir. so in damping as we are observing we are having three types of damping one is eddy current damping air friction damping fluid friction damping eddy current damping is recommendable for pmmc because it is demanding strong magnetic field strong magnetic field possible only in pmmc next one is air friction air friction damping means moving air and watt meter electrodynamometer all these devices are having weak magnetic field air friction will be suitable only for those type of instruments which is having weak magnetic field that's why air friction damping is recommendable for all of these devices similarly when we are discussing about fluid friction so in case of fluid friction the uh, thing is what we are observing here uh, <coughs> sorry uh, fluid friction will be low deflection torque so whatever the devices which are having a low deflection torque there we can utilize this method hope you understand sir that's it so let us discuss about the other things so i have covered all important types of uh, sorry important points when we are discussing about damping torques the another most important question what they will ask now amongst all these three methods which one will develop the more damping torque that is the next effective one amongst these three which is the most effective one the most effective one if they are asking that is eddy current damping as i told earlier eddy current damping is the most effective one after that fluid friction is the second most effective air friction is the third most effective So in the one more question, they will ask you. They will be request. You will be requested to identify the effective damping method order. If you are observing in descending order, the most effective method first one what we saw, eddy current damping. After that, it will be fluid friction. We will go. The third most effective method is air friction damping. That will be order in the effective wise. Okay, sir. And we have seen. in our point there will be oscillations when the moment we are trying to stop it with the help of the controlling torque that oscillation should be slowly reduced to zero or settled with the help of the damping torque only as we are observing and uh, this uh, damping torque whenever uh, you are observing a uh, damping torque will be most uh, mostly used in all type of indicating instruments in all type of indicating instruments especially means uh, second order instruments it will be used there we will be trying to operate this device at the under damping damping means it will be works under under damping because we are observing in second order instruments we will be having under damping over damping critical damping on damping in control system you might have studied these things so here out of among us all those under which uh, damping we will be operating the device here it will be used for indicating type of instruments especially second order instruments and in second order instruments we will be having four type of damping the effective uh, one is it will be what's under under damping we know in under damping the damping ratio lies between 0.8 to 0.8 that is uh, 0.2 to 0.8 that is the practical range you might be thinking that its actual range is 0 to 1 yeah that is ideal case that is ideal case but here as we are in practical circuit not even 0.2 wait i will tell you the actual one 0.5 to 0.8 is the actual range okay so that is the most effective range in which we are trying to operate this devices okay so after that now with the help of whatever the basics that we have learned let us start discussing about the instruments the first one as i told you we will be discussing about basic instruments this basic instruments are actually called electro mechanical indicating type of instruments what are the things that i am discussing now they all are called electro mechanical indicating type of instruments pmc it comes under electro mechanical indicating type of instrument electro mechanical indicating type of instrument now if you are observing what are the other devices comes under this category so i will tell you first one what are the devices that i am covering now under this we will be having uh, this is analog meters voltmeter ohm meter we will be considering so many things we are going to start from pmmc as i told the first one let us now we will start from pmmc because i have discussed all required things while discussing about permanent magnetic moving coil it is also called there is another name for this that is d arsenal instrument one more question the another name for pmmc is d arsenal instrument d arsenal instrument 
this is what we are using to measure so this is a dc now this is dc now so if you observe there will be uh, while uh, designing the measurements devices to measure the dc tangent galvanometer they will give dc tangent galvanometer is also called the another name it is called what d arsenal instrument because that is the one which is used to measure the dc values dc quantities so pmmc is basically measured only dc quantities that is the most important key point one more question you will have to remember about pmmc next if you are observing uh, pmmc it will be developing three types of torque as i told you the first torque that will be developed inside the machine is deflection torque which torque will develop first sir in order to move the pointer from one point to another point the first torque that will be developed inside the device is deflection torque what is the formula to calculate the deflection torque this deflection torque can be calculated with the help of magnetic flux density and current that is flowing through the coil number of turns and the cross sectional area everything will be given in the exam all you have to do is just to substitute all the data that's it that is the first one and here we have seen in pmmc uh, the second one next to torque is what controlling torque if you are observing the controlling torque controlling torque formula is constant k into theta t under steady state condition what will happen here is under steady state controlling torque and deflection torque will become equal to each other that is under steady state condition such that your pointer will be stopped at the desired final value position if you are equating this to we can write k times of theta equal to n b i a whatever the terms okay i am just writing like this everything from this in the examination what they will ask is if you observe the deflection angle theta and the relation the current that is flowing through the coil if you observe the above statement these two are directly proportional to each other it means if you observe they are having directly proportional it means its correspondent scale is a linear scale so pmmc device scale is a linear scale scale is linear that is the next thing linear means its uniform scale is uniform or linear they will give the question in any one way you will not remember these things next uh, what is the maximum power consumed by the pmmc device it is very 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 low order it is in microwatt the power consumed by the pmmc is very low and it will be in the order of maximum you can observe up to 200 microwatts so the power consumption is very very low when we are observing the pmmc the power consumption of the pmmc is very low that is the advantage no sir for us the next thing is it is having high accuracy it is having high accuracy it means we will have one more term that is called a torque to weight ratio torque to weight ratio the torque to weight ratio and the accuracy are always directly proportional to each other for any device if the torque to weight ratio is very high then the device will be having high accuracy since i am i am told you the pmmc is having it is high accuracy device so the torque to weight ratio also high for pmmc so it is the most accurate instrument you will have to remember that's why i am defining this point validly here and next thing is there any drawback for pmmc yes pmmc is used only for strictly it is used only for ac sorry dc measurement it can be used only for dc it cannot be used for ac measurement it will measure only dc quantities and next thing is it cost is very 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 higher that is one more drawback it cost designing cost is very very high okay that's it sir cost is high means when we are comparing it with other devices i can say it cost is very high that's it so i have given all valid points about pmmc so the most important thing in the numerical point of view what you have to remember is the formula that i had given for deflection torque n b i a and the next one is the formula that i have given for controlling torque that is k into theta under steady state these two people will be equal to each other just to do remember this formula because this is the most important valid numerical questions will be framed from here another device is moving iron instrument let's keep our attention with the next device that is moving iron instrument 
So when we are observing moving iron instrument, in moving iron instrument, the important thing is how it is working, sir. So basically, if you observe moving iron instrument, it will be uh, classified into two types. One is attraction type of instruments, another one is repulsion type of instrument. I am giving some common value points between all these types. First one, the first most important point is formula for deflection torque. What is the formula, sir? Just recollect what is studied. The formula for uh, deflection torque of moving iron instrument is R I square into inductance will be varying with respect to time, uh, sorry, theta, angle theta, deflection angle theta, dl by d theta. And as we are using, here also we will be using same controller and this uh, Tc value will be equal to k times of theta. Controlling torque. And at steady state, what will happen, sir? Deflection torque and the controlling torque will become equal to each other. So if you are equating both of these two equal to each other, then we can write half into i square into dl by d theta, half into i square into dl by d theta equal to k times of theta, another most important numerical area. So you will not remember. From this, they will ask any type of unknown values. Most of the time, what they will ask is they will be they will be asking you to calculate the value of theta. From here, if you are calculating the theta, you will be having constant value will be given, don't worry. So, 1 by 2, k into i square into dl by d theta. Now, if you are observing the uh, relation between the current and the angle theta, as you can observe, theta is directly proportional to square times of current. Yes or no, sir? Basically, this instrument is a non-linear instrument. After that, we are linearizing it. We can linearize it. We can linearize it, but in general, this instrument is giving non-linear relation between voltage and current. Further, people will be linearizing it with the help of certain conditions you might have studied it. But in general, it's a non-linearizing instrument. Next, when they are observing the uh, moving iron instrument, what they will next question they will ask is: inside the instrument, we will be connecting a bypass capacitor. across the source resistance RS, instrument, device. What will be requested is, you will be requested to calculate the value of that bypass capacitance formula. Everything will be given. Inductance value will be, inter, uh, internal coil inductance value will be given, resistance value will be given. All you have to do is just to calculate the value of this bypass capacitance. That is 0 0.41 times of L by R square. Resistance value will be given, inductance value will be given, and that is the another most important formula of moving coil. If they are asking you to calculate the bypass capacitance, just say, take the value of inductance and resistance, the formula is going to be 0 0.41 times of L by R square. This is the another most important formula that if people have failed to observe. So I will be writing it one more time. Just close your eyes and recollect 0 0.41 times of how will you write down, sir? L by R square. Don't forget here. The square will come for the denominator term. In the examination, again, one more confusion will come. Either what you will do is, you will be remembering 0 0.41 L by R, you will remember, R you will be putting L square by R. You will completely forget that the square should come only for the denominator term. So here I am unable to derive all the things. So I am just giving the final key points. It is your responsibility to remember it. Repeat one more time, because these things are very rare questions. When it is suddenly asked in the exam, now you people may not be able to catch the exact answer. So 0 0.41 times of inductance divided by resistance square, square times of resistance. Denominator resistance only squared. That's why I'm switching it again and again. Don't make mistake when it is asked in the exam. Hope you will not do that, sir. Next one, as we are observing, the another most important under moving iron instruments is. After moving iron is electrodynamometer type of instrument. The next instrument is, so we have been discussed about PMMC, permanent magnet, moving coil is power. Next we have discussed about moving iron instrument. I have given all important things for both of these people. Next we are going to discuss about the other type of device is what sir? Electrodynamometer type of instrument. The other most important device is electrodynamometer type of instrument. So I will be writing the full one. Electrodynamo with a type of instrument. So, when we are discussing about this one, again, we will have to recollect all the important required formulas. So, the first one, when we are discussing about the electrodynamo with a type of instrument, how it is working, sir? It's operating principle. That is one more question. Electrodynamo with principle. 
So it will be developing the torque. Actually, it will be developing the its operating torque with the help of interacting the magnetic field that is generated between the that is magnetic field of the fixed coil and the current that is flowing through the moving coil. Actually, two people will be there. One is magnetic field of the fixed coil. One more question directly will be given. Magnetic field of fixed coil. And the current flowing through the moving coil. Current flowing through the moving coil. So between these interactions only it will work. So there are two things. One is magnetic field, another one is current. So by interacting these two, it will be working. That is the one more question there will be asked. As I showed, the next and most important term is. We are observing in electrodynamometer. We will be having two coils. One is called fixed coil, and the second one is moving coil. So electrodynamometer is carrying two type of coil current. One is the current that is flowing through the fixed coil. I can consider I M, and the current that is flowing through the moving coil. We can consider it as I M. Based on these two currents, now if we are developing the deflection torque formula, let us see for electrodynamometer. The first most important formula is deflection torque formula. That is current I1, that is I I F right fixed coil, and the current flowing through the moving coil. In the same thing here, we will be having the mutual inductance between these two coils with respect to the deflection angle theta. That is the formula to calculate the deflection torque when we are playing with the electrodynamometer. At the final, as usual, uh, let me discuss about controlling torque also. Controlling torque, as you said, it will become k times of theta. At the steady state position, we know deflection torque and the controlling torque both will become equal to each other. So we are observing deflection torque is the product of coil current that is flowing through the fixed coil and the current that is flowing through the moving coil under the mutual inductance with respect to the angle variation theta will be equal to k times of theta. From here, you can explore the value of theta at the steady state. That's it, sir. So most of the time, what they will ask is they will be asking you to bring the relation, or you will have to start to calculate the value of theta only. So what we are observing: fixed coil current, moving coil current, and the variation in the value of mutual inductance with respect to angle theta divided by constant k will directly give you the angle or deflection in the value of theta. So this is how we are developing the torque equation. And next here, what will happen is suppose if we are using this electrodynamo meter. As a AC instrument device, if it is operated as a AC instrument device, if it will be operated as a AC instrument, what will happen, sir? I will tell you. What will happen is, as we are observing, we are having two coils. One is fixed coil and another one is moving coil. This both will carry AC sinusoidal current. If you are observing the fixed coil current. Suppose if I am considering it as maximum value of fixed coil current is sine omega t. This is how we are writing uh, its sinusoidal representation, instantaneous current. Similarly, this is maximum coil uh, current that is going into moving coil. It is sine of. Definitely, there will be a phase angle difference between these two. So the second one, let me assume the phase angle difference is phi. Now, if you are calculating the value of deflection torque from here, how will you define sir? From this. When we are using for AC instrument, if you are defining from this, if you are defining it, then this will become the formula will become as is shown. But this time will become fixed coil current into moving coil current into cosine of the phase angle difference between them into variation in mutual inductance with respect to angle theta. When it is used as a AC instrument device, that is the formula to obtain its value. And next thing, since the value of phi, suppose if the phase angle difference between them will be zero. And it is given that the value of fixed coil current and moving coil current both are equal. This is moving coil current. Huh? If it is given both are equal, then you can observe that this formula can be this deflection torque formula can be read as deflection torque is equal to I square into dm by dt. Sorry, dm by dt. Da. Here, some of you what you will do now, you will be doing the better mistake that in the denominator you will be putting one by two because you studied it now. For the previous method, moving current instrument deflection torque formula, what is sum of I square into dL by dT? Da. By keeping these things in your mind, you will be putting two here. This derivation is completely different. This is not the this is not the same one like that we have discussed before. Moving current. So 
this type of confusion will come though you are studying everything clearly this type of confusions will come anyway the final formula for diffraction torque is the general one that i have already defined you can remember that it is the product of fixed coil current into moving coil current into cosine of power factor angle cos pi into dm by dt da. just to remember this formula they will give the variation if it is not given by default you can take cos uh, sorry pi equal to 0 and uh, these two current will become equal to each other they will give everything anyway they will give everything in the question this is all about deflection tap and we have discussed about controlling torque here as we have seen already this k times of theta if you are equating these two under this condition the final one this is going to be i square times of dm by d theta when all coil uh, when fixed coil current moving coil current both are equal and the phase angle difference between them is zero in that case the deflection angle formula will become i square by constant k into dm by d theta don't forget sir factor 2 will not come when we are discussing about electrodynamometer i am repeatedly saying okay you should not forget this that is most important formula next type of instrument is electrostatic instrument the other type of instrument that you must remember is electrostatic instrument when we are discussing about electrostatic instrument what is the formula to calculate the deflection term of electrostatic instrument when we are discussing about the electrostatic instrument, please keep that in for yourself. Electrostatic instrument. For electrostatic instrument, the formula for deflection term. What is R for moving iron, sir? For moving iron, the formula we have seen of I square into dl by d theta. So this is in terms of inductance coil. This is in terms of capacitance effect. Now, if you observe the difference of replace in place of I put B in place of L put C. That's it. This is the formula for the deflection dark in case of electrostatic instrument under controlling dark, same formula, K times of theta. At the steady state, controlling dark and the damping dark both will be equal to each other. So, from this, what I can say of V square into dc by d theta will be equal to k times of theta deflection angle theta will become 1 by 2 times of k into v square into dc by d theta that's it sir this is how we are exploring the value of deflection angle when it comes for electrostatic instrument so i have completed all the type of basic instrument and we have seen its correspondent principle formulas the types of damping and which is linear which is non-linear here also you can see Always while checking the linearity, just to check the relation. For electrostatic instrument, the relation is between voltage and the current. See that once again it is non-linear. They are not linear. So this is also going to be non-linear. PMMC only linear here. Again, if you observe the electrodynamometer, there also at last what we have seen. If you go to the top bit, see that in electrodynamometer also we are observing from this expression, theta will become finally directly proportional to I square. Is it linear scale? No. But we can linearize it. We are linearizing it. As you have studied in this theory, we can linearize it by doing some modifications in these scale measurements. But in general, they all are linear, non-linear. But if you are observing the PMMC, we have seen in PMMC, NBIA equal to K times of theta. From this, what we can define is theta is directly proportional to I. So, this scale is linear here. That is how to remember. Then we saw the types of damping. Very, very important damping. The first one, anti current damping, the most effective method. Second, we have been discussed about uh, uh, air friction damping, then fluid friction damping. In effective wise, first one is anti current, next to fluid friction, air friction will come at last. Effective methods. Then we saw, but though this order, we are having certain effective order, PMMC damping uh, we have seen. One second. So, anti current damping will be used only for whom? PMMC. Because it is demanding a strong magnetic field. Next, we have seen air friction damping. It is demanding for low, weak magnetic field. Because of that, it is used for moving iron, watt meter, and electrodynamometer. We have seen. Then, we have been discussed about fluid friction. Fluid friction is demanding low deflection torque. If an instrument is having low deflection torque, there you can use the fluid friction. We have seen. That's why we have chosen electrostatic instruments, that is electrostatic voltmeter I have given specifically. 
So these all points are very very important. Just to try to keep it in your mind. Okay, sir. So this is all for this lecture. In the next lecture, we will just continue from there. We are leaving this session.